Does he agree with the Prime Minister that bad news about the New Zealand economy is overblown and that while dairy prices are down, 95 per cent of our economy is not involved in that? The Honourable Bill English. Speaker, yes. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. How does he reconcile his support for the Prime Minister's statement with the following statement also made by the Prime Minister? Quote, when things are going well on our farms, this flows through into the small towns, the provincial cities and ultimately into our big cities. Conversely, when the primary sector sneezes, the New Zealand economy catches a cold. <laughs> Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, with pretty easily, actually, there's no doubt that significantly lower dairy prices for longer than expected will have some dampening effect on the economy. But unfortunately for the member, he who, ha who gives the impression that the dairy industry is about half of the New Zealand economy, he should listen to the Prime Minister, who points out that it is around 5 per cent of GDP. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Does he agree with former National Agriculture Minister David Carter, who said, quote, South Africa has diamonds, Australia has minerals, Saudi Arabia has oil, and in New Zealand we have farms based on pasture? And if so, how does that fit with 95 per cent of the New Zealanders not being affected by plummeting dairy prices? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, of course I agree with the former uh, National Party Agriculture Minister. He's very well informed, uh, very well travelled and has great, insight, has great insight into the world economy. Uh, but, but, but uh, Mr Speaker, even that former member uh, will be aware of the facts, which are that the dairy industry is around former minister former minister, is around 5% uh, of GDP. And eventually, the finance spokesman for the Labor Party will avail himself of the facts. Supplementary question, Mr Supplementary Speaker. question, Grant Robertson. How can he claim that 95% of New Zealand is not affected by the plummeting dairy price when the 2014-15 payout means, for example, $150 million less in the Whakatane and Kaurau economy, $190 million less in the Otarahunga community, and $150 million less in the Waimati community? Or are concerns in those communities just overblown? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, no, Mr Speaker, in those communities and others uh, like Southland and Mid Canterbury, where there's a concentration of uh, dairy production, of course, are going to be affected by a payout that is going, likely to be lower than people expected and may stay lower for longer. That's pretty obvious. Uh, but at the same time, in each of those regions, each of those regions, for instance, will benefit from a stronger tourist industry where the drop in the, New Zealand ex of, in the value of the New Zealand dollar means that tourism is actually doing pretty well. And the member needs to, when he goes to those regions, make sure he understands the breadth of their economies and not just, uh, not just focus on the dairy industry. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Can uh, the minister confirm that he is saying to the people of Whakatane and Kauaro that they will get around $150 million from tourists flocking to their region to make up for the loss in dairy, dairy profits? You're ridiculous. Uh, uh, no, Mr. Honourable English. Uh, no, Mr Speaker, I didn't say that. I'm simply pointing out to the member that when the dairy industry is less than 20 per cent of exports, and you go, to, you go to any region of New Zealand which prides itself, as those regions do, on their exporting capacity, uh, he will find that there's other industry which may be balancing off some of the negative impacts of the dairy industry. For instance, in the Bay of Plenty, uh, kiwi fruit is going pretty well. But of course I agree with the member that the lower dairy price will have a significant impact on the dairy farmers and on the servicing industries related to that farming. Supplementary question, Mr. Speaker. Order. 
Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is he really dismissing as overblown a 40 per cent drop in dairy prices since March, a forecast of a $3.75 payout for 2015-16, a 20 per cent decline in commodity prices in the year to June, sharply declining public confidence, consumer confidence, business confidence and employment confidence, or do we just have to rely on his and the Prime Minister's post-holiday vibe to get us through? <laughs> Uh, the Honourable Bill uh, Well, Mr Speaker, I can see the member has learned not to use the word crisis, because when Labor says something's a crisis, it always comes right, if it, has, if it hasn't already. So, Mr Speaker, look, there's, there, are certainly risks, there are certainly risks to the economy from the global economy, uh, but the point we're making, I suppose, is that while some prices are low, others are high or haven't, haven't gone down, and the automatic stabilisers are coming into play, and that is a lower exchange rate uh, flat to, and flat to falling interest rates. So we would expect that New Zealand is on, remains on track for moderate sustainable growth of 2 to 3 per cent. Your question, Mr. Speaker. Oh, supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is it really cor correct that the government's Pollyanna position on the economy is a result of him, uh, him, as the Prime Minister said, quote, feeling better after his trip to China? And are we now going to make an economic policy based on what he's feeling in his waters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honourable Bill English, with a fair bit of licence. Well, Mr Speaker, we're certainly not going to make it on what that member might be feeling in his waters. Which, um, Mr Speaker, it's just a matter of keeping in context the breadth of the New Zealand economy. The member would like to think it's entirely focused on exporting one product to one country, but that is not in fact the case. It has a broad base, much of which is succeeding at the moment. 14% growth in IT year on year, big increases in kiwi fruit, record tourist numbers, highest mig sustained migration flows for quite some time, a wine industry with exports roughly three times what it was 10 years ago, and a dairy industry that is really struggling. That is the breadth of the New Zealand economy, and we're sufficiently resilient to absorb the shock from lower dairy prices and sustain moderate growth of 2 to 3 per cent.